Romans 5 and 1, by entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with him, make us fit for him, we have it all together with God because of our master, Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hope we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience is in turn forges the tempered steel to virtue keeping us alert for whatever God will do next in alert expectation such as this we're never left feeling shortchanged quite the contrary we can't round up enough containers to hold God generously pours out into our lives through the Holy Spirit Christ arrives right on time to make this happen didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready he presented himself for the sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. Amen. I want to preach for the next little while and just title it, Now Faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith. Amen. Lord, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your presence that's here. Thank you for your precious people. I'm asking you, God, to do great things today. I take dominion by your name over any spirit that would hinder liberty. Loose your power in this place today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Thank you for standing. We've all heard, I believe, that faith produces patience and patience produces hope. And then someone else went on to say, and hope produces experience. The enemy can only back you into your last experience. Many times we forget all the things that God has done for us. I believe that God wants us to remind him of the things that he has done. Because as we, are you listening? As we reminisce over the things that God has done, it seems to bring a, a wellspring of faith inside of us. Now, I believe God is up to something absolutely phenomenal at the Pentecostals of Richmond. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear in the Spirit great things that are on the horizon. I really feel that. We are the people of faith. If there's anybody that walk by faith, it's the children of God. Now, in our text, the Apostle Paul concludes from the previous chapters, that a person cannot be justified by their own righteousness. So in other words, justification doesn't come uh, through my works only. Justification has to do with the obedience and right positioning and, and right standing with God. I believe we all understand the plan of salvation. We understand the importance of, of repentance and baptism in his name and the infilling of his spirit according to the scripture. But justification we see is grace, just as if it had never happened. God takes that giant eraser and erases our past and takes care of our transgressions. And I think we ought to clap our hands and thank him for that today. So when you're justified, everything that the enemy had against you is erased because the enemy is the one that comes to Bring up your past. And the Bible says he is the accuser of the brethren. Because if he can accuse you and get your faith, then you will refuse to step out in faith. Amen. There's something about having peace when you know that everything is well between you and God. Amen. We're no longer alienated or separated from God. And that we have direct access to him. The Bible talks about how we now can come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Boldly into that throne room and obtain help in the time of trouble or in the time of need. We don't have to wait once a year for that high priest to come and make an atonement 
to cover our sins, but instantly, at any moment of the day or night, he is there. Praise God. He said, after the death, burial, and resurrection, he said, it is finished or it is complete. So we cast our cares upon him because he cares. It feels good to be loved. It feels good to be unconditionally loved. There's nobody can say I'm alone today because he said I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be a friend that's closer than a brother. I wish you'd receive it today. He said I'm here to love on somebody. I'm here to embrace somebody. I'm here to strengthen somebody. Verse 2, by whom also we have access. And that's how it happened. Because of the peace of God, because of his love for humanity. And now we can also have access, how? By faith. I was looking at my, uh, back at my messages and, and my files yesterday. My files on faith is probably that big. I mean thick. It's, it's a lot. I look at my prayer files and they're really thick. And I finally determined I preach more on faith and more on prayer than anything else. What are you saying, Pastor? Jesus is my access. He is my hope. So by whom we also have access by faith. The enemy makes you understand what I'm saying. He does want to destroy you, but more than you, he wants to destroy your faith. He is after your faith. If you miss everything today, hear what I'm saying. The adversary will do anything to take you out. But he wants to take out your faith. He's after you, but he's really targeting your faith. Someone said, I, I, I thought I was the main target. And I thought that, and you are the target. If you have Jesus inside of you, but you can never fulfill your purpose on earth without faith. I come today to preach to you the word of the Lord. By preaching the word of the Lord, your faith is going to increase. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. If you had a dead battery when you came in here, I'm putting a charger on it right now. I prayed in the Holy Ghost. The church has been praying and fasting. So in this place today, you will have life because the spirit of the Lord is here. Got in my car yesterday and it said, either run the car or put on a battery charger. Because your battery is about to die. I don't know what your battery level is, but I know that when cold weather comes, if you've got a weak battery, your car is not going to start. I'm not sure what you're going to face tomorrow, but the adversary says, I want your battery to drain down. I want your faith to be weak because in that weak state, I can overtake you. And when you need the power of God, you're going to find yourself in need of God. When your relationship with God gets compromised, your faith is weakened. The adversary can get us into a carnal state to where our heart condemns us, where we're crossing over the line, and we feel like that we're not worthy to come into the presence of God. Our faith is hindered. Amen. But when your your faith is weakened, your ability to believe and call forth literally is dead. God wants us to be instant in season and out of season. He wants us to be lit up with his power. He wants us to be ready at the moment's time to speak to the darkness or to call out from that situation. Your ability to speak into the atmosphere, to decree a thing or declare a thing is hindered when your faith is weak. Job 22 and 26 in the message said, You'll take delight in God, the mighty one, and look to him joyfully, boldly. You'll pray to him, and he'll listen. He'll help you do what you promise. You'll decide what you want, and it will happen. Your life will be bathed in light. To those who feel low, you'll say, chin up, be brave, and God will save them. Yes, even the guilty will escape, escape through God's grace in your life. God wants to give you and I an attitude adjustment today. I'm not talking about this kind. I'm talking about he wants to breathe on you a breath of heaven today to let you say you're not in a hopeless sea, you're not in a hopeless situation. 
Your back's not against the wall. There is no situation that God can't fix. There's no situation that God can't turn around. There's nobody that can't, amen, be touched by the hand of God. If they'll surrender to his will. So what the enemy wants you to do is to hear the trash of the world. He wants you to spend your time on all the media junk and all the strategy of hell to turn our world in an upheaval. He wants you to be tainted by the spirit of this world. The adversary wants to shake up your faith. He wants to put the world system, the mindset of this world in your heart. But we are pilgrims just to pass him through. This world is not our home. Our home is on the other side. The adversary will always, it started with Eve, he always will put a little seed of thought to contradict the word of the Lord. If there's anybody that should have peace, it should be the family of God. If there's anybody that has hope, it should be you, my brothers and sisters today. But it takes faith for you to move in that decision of declaration, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That declaration, if God is for me, who can be against me? That declaration, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Exodus 14, 21 in ASB. Then Moses reached out with his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept back the sea back by the strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided so the sons of Israel went through in the midst of the sea on dry land and the waters were like a wall to them on their right and on their left. Then the Egyptians took up the pursuit and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen went in after them in the midst of the sea but at the morning watch the Lord look down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and brought the army of the Egyptians into confusion. There is nothing that God won't do to touch and protect his church. There is nothing more precious than you, children of God. There is something you must understand about the love of a dad or love of a mom. And we are protectors of our children. We're protectors of our of those that are of our lineage and those that are part of our family. We love them. We embrace them. We guard them. We protect them, whatever we have to do. But if I could show you a picture of my Jesus that I've been talking to about you, if I could tell you today how much he cares about you, if I could somehow push back the heaviness that's on you and tell you that he sent me with a word to tell you today that I've given you direct access, church. I've given you an inner sanctum visit. You can come right into my presence and I will do for you what you cannot do for yourself. Oh, I wish you'd clap your hands unto the Lord. By faith, the children of Israel crossed over the Red Sea, inherited land by faith. I don't know why God did it. I, he did it. There's nobody can improve on it. But he made things to work like he wanted them to work. He said, I can do all kinds of things, but I put it in your hands. And I've given you gift. Every person has a measure of faith. It was absolutely impossible without faith. It's absolutely impossible to please God without faith. Amen. That means to come in agreement with God. To, to see the things of God, you've got to come in agreement with his word. None of us likes to be doubted. None of us likes to be, well, I don't know if I can believe that person or not. Amen. God says, I want, the, the, one of the greatest things that can happen is I want you to believe my word. I want you to trust what I say can be applied to your life. Amen. Luke twenty two thirty one, 31, King James. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, are you listening? Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith, that thy faith, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both to prison and to death. Peter was a radical dude. 
I think it was a little loud. I believe he was. But, but here, remember, he carried a sword, and he cut off the ear of a man that was attempted to keep Jesus from being arrested. And Jesus was saying here to Simon Peter, Satan wants you. He's demanded you, almost like Job. Satan is after you, son. He is wanting to destroy you, and he wants to sift you, which means that inwardly he agitates you to the over throwing of your faith that he may sift you as wheat. Amen. I prayed for you, Simon Peter. I prayed for you. I didn't pray for your headache. I didn't pray that you'd have a better job. I didn't pray that you'd get better clothes. I didn't pray about this. But what I did pray, I prayed that you didn't lose your faith. I prayed that your, oh, shata. I prayed that your faith would be strong. I prayed when the enemy come in like a flood that you would stand. I prayed when temptation came that your faith would be strong. I prayed when your family was in trouble that you would stand on faith. When you come through persecution, I pray that your faith would be strong. When the enemy come in, I pray that you would stand on my word. <sighs> Jesus was saying, once your faith, oh here pastor, when your faith fails, you are in trouble. When your faith fails, and it doesn't take a lot for faith to fail, you've got to water, you've got to feed that that you want to grow. I want to grow in faith. I want to grow in knowledge. I want to grow in understanding. But I've got to grow in faith. Yeah. Though he slay me, Job said. How could he do that? Because he had fed his faith. He fed his faith. Today, being in the house of God is important to those who are online. If you can be in church, you should be in church today. You need to be among the people of God, where the presence of God is flowing, where the word of God is bringing strength. <laughs> Praying, Simon Peter, that your faith doesn't fail. Would you lift your hands and say, God, I don't want my faith to fail. Amen. Amen. If you've ever begun to walk in authentic, authentic faith, there's no stopping you from all of this. Once you've ever seen what God can do and will do, once you've ever got revelation, I prayed today you'd have revelation of the word as I preached it. There's nothing that you cannot do. Hebrews 11, chapter the 6th verse. But without faith, it's impossible. I've said it, but I want to read it now. Impossible to please him, God, without faith. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Those that diligently seek him. I want to preach to you today that there's an experience you haven't had yet. There's a depth and there's a height that you have not obtained yet. There's rich things that God has for you that maybe you've never tasted yet. There's something about that delectable meal. There's something about that, uh, that special place that you visited. You said, I've never been to a place like that before. I've never tasted food like that before. I want to tell you there's a place in God that's called faith. From faith to faith. When you walk, the just shall live by faith. Too long a setting of scriptures to read all of them. Hebrews 11th chapter, the heroes of faith, back to back to back. How many wants God to use you in a mighty way? How many has a need that you say only God can fulfill that need? I wish everybody would participate. How many says, I want God to minister to me today? I want a new level of faith. I want my faith stretched. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Why did you choose faith, God? I don't know why. Maybe it's the highest dimension of trust in him and his word. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God. How did you do it, Abel? How did you do it? It was my faith in God. I offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than came, by which he obtained witnesses that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he was being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch, how, how Enoch? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. 
and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had the testimony that he pleased God. I don't know. That was a supernatural thing that happened. Enoch did not see death. There is a place in God that he is calling us to. That the supernatural. We cannot conform to our world. We cannot blend into the world. The world can't bleed into the church. But the church has got to be the church. We've got to live by faith. We've got to walk by faith. We've got to bind. We've got to loose. And we've got to believe. Oh, clap your hands if you believe that. Verse 6, without faith, it's impossible. Here it is again, over and over, to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He's a reward of them that diligent seek him. But here, by faith, Noah, you remember Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as of yet, moved with fear, prepared the ark by the saving of his house. How did it happen? He was moved of God. He was warned of God of things not yet seen. What are you saying, Pastor? I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know what Washington is going to do. I don't know what Richmond's going to do. I don't know what Iran or Iraq. I don't know what Afghanistan's going to do. I don't know about all of the things that are happening in our world. But I have been warned ahead of time that perilous times are coming. But I know that if God is with me, if God is with my family, if God is with my church, if God is with my finances, if God is with my health, if God is before me, then everything's going to be okay. Verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned into a land of promise. I'm on a journey, and I'm headed to another land. How about you? Praise God. By faith, he sojourned to the land of promise. As in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him the same, uh, of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had, had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, faith continues to work. Faith will work in every facet of your life. Faith will work on your job. Faith will work in the school. Faith will work in the mall. Faith will work in your home. Faith will work in the city. It will work in the country. He looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker was God. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to what? Here we go again. Every need we have, he is Jehovah, Jireh. Amen. Sarah, what about it, Sarah? She received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Why? Because she was faithful and she lived by faith. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky and multitude and the sand by which the seashore is immeasurable. There is something about faith that God wants you to pass down to your kids. There's something that needs to happen in our homes that we can't always say the doctor, the medicine, the doctor, the medicine. There comes a time when mom and dad says, we're walking by faith, baby. We're walking. It's in the middle of the night. Or whatever the crisis is, I know there's a lot of meds. And I believe that God has empowered our doctors and scientists and give them all kind of, uh, of knowledge and ability. But there's something about the just. You are the just. There's something about the family of God. There's something about the Holy Ghost filled people. The people that are called by his name. That have got to operate in faith. We've got to operate in faith. We've got to begin to speak to the mountain. Mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. By, Abraham, by faith, Abraham, verse 17, when he was tried... Offered up Isaac, there is no other way to do some things. There is no way to operate in some dimensions except by faith. Because it defies everything in your being. But by faith, Abraham walked into a place. Amen. Amen. According 
that God had already his relationship with God. He knew that God was with him. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both of his sons, Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. What are you saying? From the time they are born until the time that this life is over, we've got to preach faith. We've got to think faith. We've got to live faith. We've got to walk faith. We've got to talk faith. Hallelujah. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Seven days. What's happening? We can't move them. There's nothing we can do. We're hopeless. Oh, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot, the song said. Just use what you've got. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies of peace. Something about faith that moves the hand of God. Women received their dead raised to life again. How? Through faith. Hebrews, the first chapter, is full of heroes of faith that are saying, God, you have my total trust. My total trust is in you. Faith is that substance of things that we hope for, yet there's no evidence of it. It's something that we need and we believe, and there is no evidence that it's coming, but we take a step out in the middle of nothing, and we stand on the promises of God, and we begin to declare it. We begin to speak it. Trust, total trust, is that foundation for what I expect to possess. It's the proof or power to remove doubt. Lift your hands. By the authority of the word of God that I hold in my hand, I take dominion over doubt and fear and unbelief in this building today. Those who are online, I speak to you now. I bind doubt and fear and unbelief that has come to you. And I loose the power of God that you could receive the faith that God wants to impart to you now. Now clap your hands with faith and believe. It's easy to have faith when you've got a fat bank account. It's easy to have faith when the doctor said you've got to check up. You're going to live to be 120 years old, sir. It's easy to have faith when everything, everybody loves you and everything's good. Amen. But it's this total trust thing when everything contradicts what God is saying. When circumstances say, uh-oh, God failed you. God is not there. But you speak to the darkness that just shall live by faith. Nothing can change me. Amen. Well, we are conditional people. We or time-limited people, we're saying, you know, I, I can trust you for 24 hours. And, and some might stretch and say, God, I, I can believe you for seven days. But if I, haven't, if I haven't, haven't got a raise by then, if I haven't got, I can't do it. I, I, I've been waiting five years on a companion. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm going to take it in my own hand. I I'm, 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 I'm give you plenty of time. Are you with me? Amen. But what if we had a 40-year test like Moses had, 40-year test? What if you're 17 years into the caves like David was, needed a miracle, needed deliverance? What if you're locked away in the prisons on false charges and forgotten like Joseph was? Oh, God, where are you? We've all been there. We've been on the islands by herself. We've been in, in, a, in serious positions. We've wept and we've cried and we've prayed and we've thought, God, you've forsaken us. I, but he said, I, I've never seen the righteous forsaken 
nor is he to beg him for bread. He, he's there, but in the midnight, I've been there. You read Sister Forbes' book, many of you, some mountains are to climb, and many of the mountains in our life that only cover just a small portion of the mountains. But, but what we do is we dig our heels in and say, I know it's rough right now. And that pilot that says, we've got some turbulence ahead, put on your seat belts. Nobody get out of your seat because we've got to go through some rough. Sometimes it's rough, and sometimes it's shaking every fiber in our being. But but I tell you, I'm not turning loose. I'm not turning back. I'm going through this situation because I see by faith on the other side. It's dark where I am. It's cloudy where I am. There's tornadoes where I am. There's hurricanes where I am. It's dark. I can't see my way, but I feel the Spirit of the Lord. By faith, He's carrying me through. By faith, I'm getting to the other side. By faith, I'm going to live. By faith, I won't lose my family. By faith, I'll make it financially. Oh, I wish you'd put your hands together and magnify him. What if you're on the backside of the desert alone many times? The test comes. Nobody may know where you are, but the test is intense. It's intense. What if you're in the fire furnace? Shadrach, Meshach. I mean, everyone else is doing it. Everybody else is bowed. Everybody else is doing what everything, everybody else thinks they should be doing. Amen. Doing everything the flesh wants to do. But here was these guys that said, we're the just. We're going to walk by faith. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. Whatever happens just happens because we're not bending to the God of this world. Let it be said to the church that we're not bending to the God of this world. But if you're like Stephen who being stoned and killed. What if you're like John the Apostle who is being boiled in hot oil, sent to the most violent criminals in Ireland, a place called Patmos, but the word said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I will tell you there's some things you can't pass. There's some mountains you can't climb. Some rivers you can't swim. Some situations you can't endure unless you're in the Spirit. Unless you're walking by faith. Can I speak to you today that God is calling you out of depression. He's calling you out of whatever it is that has you hit and pushed you down. God said today, lift up your head, throw back your shoulders, and begin to walk. The just shall live, I believe, and walk by faith. That's total trust, total trust, total trust. We're in a non-trusting world. It takes a whole lot to get our trust. But if you're like John the Baptist, who's going to be beheaded, that's total trust. Faith is total trust. Not sort of trust, but total trust. Total trust is when the doctor says you're going to die, but the word said you shall live. I will live and not die. What are you going to confess? The lie or the truth? By faith, I will live and not die. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never forget, 18 years old, they didn't know what happened. There's something was happening. It felt like somebody had literally a, a, a hammer or, or, or a sledgehammer and was beating my head. The pain was so intense. The light to my eyes it felt like somebody was gouging my eyes out. And, and finally, in the hospital finally said he has spina meningitis and he is dying. And I remember the situation. And I remember how it progressed. And I remember the intense pain. And I remember when they'd done everything they'd do. They'd put IVs here. They even put them in my leg. They'd sent all the meds they could send. They brought it from out of town. But I remember they pushed me into a room. I remember leaving my body. I knew that it was over. But two men of God walked into that room and began to declare the word of the Lord over me. They begin to speak the word of the Lord. I sent my, my spirit coming back into my body. I knew that it was God. God saved me. Within three days' time, I was back in my house. I was walking and talking. I live today with the power and the experience of the miracle of faith. Oh, hallelujah. Entertain him right now. Timothy said, 1 and 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and a sound mind. Isaiah said, 26 and 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. How can you have peace going through a storm? How can you have peace when there is so much turbulence? How can you have peace, Pastor, when you lost three brothers and one sister in 10 months' time? How can you do that? Because I trust him. I don't know the way. I can't see the way. I feel the heaviness and the weight, but I've got to get past that and get into his presence. Turn to somebody and say, whose report will you believe? Total trust when you have no finances, when you don't even have a job. Total trust, total trust when you know you're walking alone. Total trust is back in 1988. Somebody say 1988. And God says, I want you to load up your family in a town 986 miles from here. I want you to go to Richmond, Virginia. I want you to start a church. Do you have a building? No. Do you have a congregation? No. Do you have a job there? No. Do you have a place to live there? No. Total trust is a foundation that God can build on. Build on. And here we are today, 30-some years later. So without faith, there's no foundation. Faith is that launching pad, that springboard. So if there's no expectation, then guess what? They started off. I heard Brother Chris say, I have expectation today for what God is going to do. Then there is going to be a, a, a void of whatever we're going to see, receive. If, if, I, if, if I could hand out a piece of paper today, and I wish you'd write it down in your Bible or somewhere, what is the one thing that you want God to do for you today before you leave this place? I wish you'd write that down. One thing that you'd like for God to do today, not tomorrow, not 16 months from now, but today. Now, faith, I'm preaching about today. Write down what you're believing God for to do for you today. Faith is confidence, confidence that God is working it all out. Anybody can talk about the negative, and our world is full of negativism. It, it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a very difficult time to live in social circles because everything has been dumped in our kids' minds and on our jobs and our media, and it's all just a big mess. It's a big negative mess, and everybody's against everybody, and hate and violence and murder and all the things that are happening, but it takes a child of God to speak to the darkness. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Isn't the Lord good? Isn't he wonderful? Hasn't he been good to us? Oh, look at the trees. Look at the sunshine. Look at the blessings and the favor of God. Faith confidence that God's working it all out. Faith is not frantic. Faith is not fearful. Faith is not anxious. Faith is not stressful. Faith is a calm confidence that God already is ahead of my storm. He is yesterday, today, and forever. He's already in my tomorrows so I can live because he already is in my tomorrows. There is nothing I have to fear. I've just got to walk with him, keep my relationship strong with him, and trust him and know that he's got my best interest. Yes. Amen. The same God that brought you through the last trial, the last nightmare, the last emergency, the same God is going to do it again. Amen. Amen. And I'm hurrying to a close. Faith is fully resting and fully trusting in the promises of God. We remember hearing about the time when your word was your bond. Shake somebody's hand, it was done. You didn't need to sign a contract because it was the integrity that people operated with. Well, I will tell you, you can trust him. His word is his bond. Amen. 2 Samuel 22 and 2, 
And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. Are you ready for some more word? He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the God of my rock, and him will I trust. He is my shield, the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior. Thou saveth me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Jeremiah says, some will call on horses and chariots, but I will call on the name of the Lord. Somebody needs to say Jesus about right now. (laughs) Jeremiah said, cursed is the man who trusts in the armor of flesh, but some of us will trust in the arm of God. He will bring you out with a strong and mighty arm. He's saying, the Lord is my rock. Who's your rock? The Lord is my rock. Who's your deliverer? It's him that I will trust. I want trust to build in the church. Amen. For your future. I don't want our families to live in fear. I, 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 I don't want you to have to live with lights on all the night. I don't want you to have to live with, with some kind of fear level night and day. Afraid to drive. Afraid to this. and Afraid of that. God said I want to bring peace to them and trust that I'll never leave them. You're going to put your trust in who? Amen. There are important people in your life. There's important people. You're important to me. But what if somebody that's really important to you dies? Who's going to be there? He wants to be your number one. Number one above all things. My trust is in him. When Abraham was 99 years old, God simply said to Abraham, I am almighty God. We love and trust many. Our human trust can be strong at many times. But we've got to understand my source comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. My protection comes from the Lord. My healing comes from the Lord. Amen. I have only one God. He is El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is my healer. I wish I had time to go through all of them. (laughs) Amen. He is my deliverer. (laughs) He is my provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I need somebody to help me here. As I close out this message today, I need somebody to hear and respond by faith that God is at work in your home right now. God is at work in your life right now. God is at work in your family right now. Trust that God will keep his word. I'm working in this arena of faith right now because somebody's getting ready to go to the next level. You're tired of setting. You're tired of just giving a patty cake for Jesus, but you're hungry. Deep is calling to deep. Deep is calling to deep. Not the shallow, not just wading your feet in, but the deep things of God. There is a rest whereby the weary can rest. That's why Peter could go to sleep on death row. James said, 1 and 7, I can trust because every good and perfect gift comes from God. Why would you hold your praise from him? Why would you hold your trust from him? Because he's a just and fair and loving God. If you're not fully in agreement with God, amen. He's not going to alter his ways because of your doubt and unbelief. He will, listen to pastor, he will show up. He will show off. He will respond. When you begin to praise him, there's something that begins to happen. I can stand over here and watch it. When you begin to worship him, something begins to flow. There's a reciprocation of his spirit. When you begin to lift up the name of Jesus, he can't help himself. One writer said he comes down and sits right beside you when you begin to worship him. Oh, clap your hands to the Lord. Don't expect to change God into your mannerisms, into your philosophy. Don't expect to turn God around and make him submit to you. Don't try to alter his word to fit your lifestyle or what the voice that's coming to our world today. God's not going to say, hey man, I'm going to change it because of you. 
His word is forever settled in heaven. He's not going to say because you're not obeying. I know you're a good guy. You're a good girl. It's fine. I love you enough. You can continue in your sin. I know you're better than him or her. Or that. No, that's not how he works. Amen. 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 We've got a problem at times submitting totally. God already knows the outcome. He knows about obedience. He knows about submission. He's not going to say, oh, son, I know it's been tough. You don't have to pay your tithes. I'm going to bless you over top of that. It's not, it's not according to his word. I'm not preaching about finances today, but that's one of the areas. We say, oh, I'm fine. God understands. He doesn't understand. He said obedience is better than sacrifice. But when you come to me in obedience, when you come to me in submission, when you come to me, amen, with total trust, it's the whole package. God is not the one being tested. Amen. It's us. He's calling us to a higher level. In the power of agreement with his word, would you stand? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. When faith is established, the covenant can be formed. By faith, I can be in total agreement with God and his word. Not by how I feel, but by his word. The Bible says, Matthew 18 and 19, if two shall agree on earth touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them for my Father which is in heaven. Faith binds me to the Word of God. I step out of what somebody said and I walk into what he said. I begin to, God told me years ago, remind me of my promises. When it didn't happen, you step out in faith and you bind yourself to the Word of God. Amen. Oh, I can preach another hour, maybe two hours. Miss Serena. Amen. If you have faith, you expect things to happen. Woo! Can't wait. Do you see it? No, I, I don't. Woo! I feel it. Why? Hope is there. Faith is there. I expect it. It's going to happen. Is Johnny saved yet? Is he in the church? No, but I see him. By faith, I see this miracle. I see this cancer going away. I see God at work. Come on now. We're almost there. Somebody pat a cake for Jesus at least. Pat your foot at least. Give him something that affirms that you're on board. That hell no. Hey, I heard that. I accept that. I believe that. Hope dissipates the time of his arrival. Hope expects God's manifestation. Amen. Faith is based on the knowledge of God's word and the knowledge of God's character. Amen. I'm opening this altar in just a few minutes for somebody that has faith and you're stepping out of where you are into the promises of God and you're walking toward this altar with your hands up. You come to express faith in God. You come to come out of the, uh, all of the jumbo and the confusion and the heaviness and the doubt and the fear and the anxiety and all the broken promises and all the lies of hell but you walk out oh somebody ought to be coming already you walk out of that lie out of that heaviness out of that discussion out of that deception out of that depression into the promises of God would you come even now lift your voice and say God I want to go where you want me to go you're calling me to a new dimension <laughs>